Hey, literature. Today, I want to introduce you to a group of writers called the Transcendentalists. We'll be reading a couple of texts by the Transcendentalists. So today, I want to define what the word transcend, transcendentalism, and transcendentalists mean. We'll look at a piece of poetry written by one of our transcendentalists, and we'll consider their core values. The word transcend, you may have noticed from one of your vocab words, means to go beyond the normal range or limits of. And transcendentalists were a group of writers that believed that they could use writing to go beyond our normal everyday experiences. They believed in living life to the fullest, and they did that through their writing as a way to break away from society, to do something different, and as I said, to live fully. So looking at the pieces of each of these words, remember an ism is a belief, and an ist would be the person in that belief. So transcendentalism is just the belief that we can use writing to break away or go beyond our normal, ordinary lives. And a transcendentalist is someone who follows that belief. Here's a poem by uh, Walt Whitman, who is one of our transcendentalist writers. Read it with me. And as I read it, consider the story that this poem is telling. When I heard the learned astronomer, when the proofs, the figures were arranged in columns before me, when I was shown the charts and diagrams to add, divide, and measure them, when I, sitting, heard the astronomer where he lectured with much applause in the lecture room, how soon unaccountable I became tired and sick, till rising and gliding out I wandered off by myself, in the mystical moist night air, and from time to time looked up in the perfect silence at the stars. Well, in the first part of this story, the poet is writing about a class that he's walking past. And there's this famous lecturer, astronomer, lecturing to a group of students all about astronomy. And the transcendentalist kind of grows tired of, of that, of learning in that way. And so the transcendentalist goes to learn a different way. Well, look at how he learned astronomy by actually looking at the stars, by experiencing what nature had to offer. So transcendentalism is a lot about uh, lessons that life has to teach us as opposed to lessons that books have to teach. Here are pictures of our two transcendentalists that we'll be studying, Emerson and um, Henry David Thoreau. Their first core value is to be yourself. The transcendentalists believed in fully being a unique and wonderful individual, that you were created that way for a reason, and that you shouldn't be like anyone else. You shouldn't copy other people. We'll see that come out quite a bit in self-reliance. Secondly, they believed in living life to the fullest, that experiences shouldn't be wasted, that we should be doing something important with our lives every single day. And even if your life is going to school every day, whether that's online or in person, they would say you should live your best student life. You should really take advantage of all the opportunities that life has to offer you at this point. Their third core value was to have some type of relationship with God. A lot of the transcendentalists um, came from religious backgrounds or were even ministers themselves. But I put a little note here. They believe in having a relationship with God um, in a spiritual aspect, but that doesn't necessarily mean following all the strict rules that are sometimes associated with religion. So they might not have gone to church every Sunday. They might not have read the Bible every day. Uh, but they believed that God created nature for us to enjoy, that God created us to be unique individuals. So instead of thinking just about strict rules that guide religion, think more about a creator and creation. And that's really what the transcendentalists believed. Their fourth core value I've already hinted at is that nature is sacred. They believe that we should be outdoors as much as possible, that we should enjoy all of this opportunity that we have around us. Um, rocks and trees and mountains, and um, that we should respect nature, right? That it shouldn't be damaged, that we should value this nature, this gift that's been given to us. And their final core value is to live simply. They believed in living simply, both in terms of possessions, like how many things they had, but also in terms of keeping a simple schedule. They would have done um, perhaps a lot less than we do on a regular basis. If you think about your daily life, you're probably very busy. Uh, you go to seven classes a day, maybe you have athletic practice or a job after school, and the transcendentalists would have said, you should simplify 
your schedule and perhaps you should simplify your belongings. Do you need 20 pairs of shoes? I might say yes. A transcendentalist probably would say no. So looking at these five core values, these will guide us through our readings in this unit. But I also want you to consider yourself as a transcendentalist or maybe not. Looking at these five values, initially you should be able to check off some boxes and maybe think, oh, I kind of am a transcendentalist or maybe I'm not. The one that students often get stuck on is number three. And I don't want you to think of that again as a strict uh, rule following religion, but more as spirituality and belief in a creator. That would be that value. So as we read our transcendentalists, we'll spend some time enjoying nature. We'll consider living simply and living life to the fullest, being ourselves, and um, maybe that spiritual relationship. Enjoy. <laughs>